Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. This week we have been having a look at our God of bountiful grace. He indeed is a bountiful God and He is grace. And when you discover who He is and what grace truly is and how grace is so freely accessible, when you understand a revelation of grace, it frees you to walk in the fullness of all that God has for you. Never again will the enemy be able to stop you and from accessing and getting a hold of everything God has for you. You're going to love this subject. I'll see you right afterward. So whatever we believe has to be founded in scriptures. If somebody gives you a doctrine and you say, where does it say that? What's that founded on? If they can't quote scriptures, you're not obligated to believe it. But if the Word of God has spoken, then we choose to believe those things. And so we are studying out the awesome grace of God. Sometimes grace can be misunderstood like anything in the world. We know that uh, there are, there's the powerful truth of the Word of God. And if you can imagine, the Bible talks about walking on a highway of holiness. So if you think of that highway as the road, the Bible says the righteous will walk on that. That's our highway of holiness. But then you can think of the, the errors, the ditches. So you can land up in a ditch. Even though it sounds like the truth, you could be in one ditch. But then when you're born again, you find out what the truth is. You can pull so hard to get out the ditch, you can land up in the ditch on the other side. And so you don't want to be extreme out this way or extreme out that way. We want to be, make sure it's centered on the Word of God. And so the same way with the grace of God is that we understand that when we first uh, hear things from the Word of God, maybe not yourself, but it has been said out there, that you know that we're all just a bunch of sinners struggling to get past, and you know, just thank God that He saved us. And you know, and maybe we'll get to heaven, maybe we won't, and we're just struggling, we just, you know need God so much because we're all sinners. But then we found out from the Word of God, no, Jesus was made to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God. So uh, a sinner, you're not a sinner because you sinned. You were born a sinner. Every one of us was born a sinner. And that's what sinners do. They land up sinning. But Jesus, who knew no sin, the Bible says he was tempted in all things, yet without sin, was tempted without, with, 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 even though he was without sin, tempted all things, he was made to be sin. So he took on your nature, your and my nature, the sin nature of the world. Jesus took it and as a great exchange, gave his righteousness. His righteousness is a gift. Say that, his righteousness is a gift to me. It's the righteousness of God. So when we receive the righteousness of God, then we are made righteous. So the same way it wasn't our sins that made us sinners. We were, the nature was a sinner. We were born as sinners. That's why we sinned. Well, you weren't made righteous because you were right. You, you were, God gave you His righteousness, and now you have the righteousness of God. Amen. I said you have the righteousness of God. You need the scripture for that. See, some people are still looking at me strange. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says that we were given the righteousness of God. It's not our righteousness. It's His righteousness. So now, as the righteousness of God, if He took sin nature and He became sin and He removed sin, then how could I be called a sinner? Does that make sense? So I've been made the righteousness of God. Say this, I was a sinner... When I gave my life to Jesus, I was made the righteousness of God. So now, praise God, we recognize we're no longer these sinners desperately trying to be good. No, we've been made the righteousness of God. The temptation is to be pulled over into the other ditch where now, well, I'm the righteousness of God. doesn't really matter what I do. You know, because as the righteousness of God, how can I ever sin? doesn't matter what I do. It can't be called sin because I'm now... No, you've got to make sure you don't land up going back into another era. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen. You know, some people say you teach this message on grace and people say, you know, Pastor Allen, you give people a license to sin. I found out people don't need a license to sin. Just the flesh nature alone. <laughs> Come on. But one thing I have learned is that when someone's born again, 
a true commitment to Jesus and are made the righteous of God, they don't want to sin. How do you say amen to this? You see, like I said it before, when you're born again, you can do anything you want to. People are like, what? Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I don't want to smoke at all. I said, I have, no, I have no desire in me. That's been removed. Any, any desire for substance, you know, support from a substance has been taken from me because my support is in God. So if I don't want to smoke at all, I'm smoking as much as I want to. Oh, you didn't get that? Get, get the message on CD and you can listen to it a little bit. You realize uh, I'm smoking as much as I want to, which is not at all. So I'm doing whatever I want to. See, my want to is to serve Him. My want to is to honor Him. My want to is to walk a road of righteousness. I want to work that righteousness out in me. I don't want to sin. Come on, how you say amen to that? And so when we see in Romans 5, 17, it says, If by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more, everyone say much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. That's ruling and reigning as a king when you receive the gift of righteousness. So now you've got to recognize that you are righteousness and receive that. Say, I receive my righteousness. I see myself. Say, I see myself as righteous. See, that as long as the enemy can hook your nature, you hook your desires to sin, he tries to get your identity locked into what your temptations were, then he can keep you out of the righteousness of God. You say, no, that's not me anymore. It's no longer I live. It's Christ who lives in me. I'm living in the righteousness of God. So those who receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. Everybody say, abundance of grace. And that's why we saw, when we go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, we won't go and read the, the I want to read it from the Amplified Version right now. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace that's the throne of God's unmerited favor that we may receive mercy for our failures find grace to help in good time for every need appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it hallelujah now how you know that's describing when I am at my weakest when I need God the most, that could be in a temptation, it could be in a moment of failure, it could be in a moment of doubt or fear or worry or anxiety. So this could be the moment you've just sinned. Isn't that a time of weakness? So the moment you've just committed a sin, think about that for a moment. I know it's a long time ago since you last did one, but you know the feeling you had when it happened? That moment you just sinned. Listen to what it says. Therefore, come boldly, fearlessly, confidently. Now that's, that's a whole different terminology to the way religion tries to get you to slither into God's presence. God doesn't want anybody slithering into His presence. Come on. Can you get a hold of this? He wants you to know that when you give your life to Jesus, you are born again, you made the righteousness of God, that when you do sin, He knows it. He was tempted in all things, yet without sin. He's not without sympathy towards you. He knows exactly what you went through. So the moment you sin, the moment something goes wrong, then you confidently step before God not because I just sinned I'm confident because I know you see me as righteous 
I'm bold to come before you because I know how powerful the blood of Jesus and no sin will ever outpower God's grace and His mercy. Nothing could ever overshadow the blood of Jesus. And if you panic in at any moment, maybe there's a, there's a guilt or the devil's trying to make you feel bad, all you need to do is just lift your hand and say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. Have you ever seen this in American law, you may have seen it in a movie, when uh, someone's committed a crime or they not even maybe part of something that they may not have committed the crime that they're busy trying somebody on, they're a witness, but if they, wit if they tell the truth, it may implicate them in another place. Are you with me? They, 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 they're not sure how it's going to turn out. If they say this, it may land up, they get prosecuted for something else or whatever. Then they have the right, because they're not the ones on trial, they have a right to say, they call it, they plead the fifth. It's the Fifth Amendment. In other words, you don't have to testify if it implicates you. If, you're not, if they can't find enough to ch charge you, then you plead the fifth, and then you don't have to answer the question. You understand? So, when the devil comes along and tries to tell you, yeah, but you still, you, you say you're not a sinner. Well, what was that yesterday? What did you just do? You, you say you're not a sinner. Well, what, how come you sinned? And you just say, I plead the blood of Jesus. That's all you need to do. I plead the blood of Jesus. Can you do that? Say it. Practice. That silences the enemy. Because now it's not, yeah, but you, no, Jesus. You want to talk to anyone? Talk to him. His blood is on the throne, not mine. His righteousness is what he gave me. He has declared me righteous. I've confessed I'm a sinner. I confessed I sinned. And when I did that, what happened? He was faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. So that means I can confidently stand in the throne room of grace because the blood of Jesus is what gives me access. Amen? Amen. Just remember that when you die, when you leave this earth, you won't die, but you, your body will stop working and you'll step out. If anything gets in your way and says, why should you go into heaven? Don't try and argue. Don't say, but I, I'm a Christian. I'm a good guy. I, I'm, I, I went to the Bay Christian Family Church. They told me I'm going to heaven. Don't, don't try any of that. If anyone stops you and says, why should you go into heaven? You say, just look inside. Is there blood on the throne? Yes, that's me. That's, my, that's all I need to know is Jesus said, I've got a way in. Yeah, but... Just before you died, you did this. The blood. Amen. The blood Amen. of Jesus says I have access to his throne. Amen. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise if you get a hold of that. Shout out the blood of Jesus. See, the Bible tells us in Romans 4 verse 16, and it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Ephesians chapter 2 says, you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sin. He, you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3 now. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God. Yeah. Everyone say, but God. But God. Who is rich in mercy. Because of His great love with which He loved us. Say, my God loves me. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. Hallelujah. And raised us up together. Made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are you seated? In heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus, where is he seated? On the throne of grace. He is grace. Our God is the spirit of grace. Jesus, full of grace and truth. Say, I'm seated in Christ. I'm seated in grace. That in the ages to come, he will show his exceeding riches of his grace 
in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you've been saved how through faith so we learned that faith is what gives us access to grace how do I receive grace by faith how does faith come by hearing hearing by the Word of God what is the spirit of faith having believed I speak so now I say I receive the grace of God his grace is living in my life and I'm living for him hallelujah and then by grace you be saved through faith that not of yourselves it's the gift of God verse 9 not of works lest any man should bo should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them hallelujah so uh, it's not our good works that save us it's not our good works that make God pleased with us even though good works do please him he still loves you I said he loves you we know that it's without faith it's impossible to please God so faith is when you've heard the Word of God and you believe that word and act on his word that pleases God and when you act on his word the result of that word shows up in your life hallelujah say this when I act on the word of God the presence of God shows up in my life now you know God's always present so now you and I have grace say I've received the grace of God now remember Romans chapter 6 verse 1 says what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound verse 2 certainly not so we recognize that grace doesn't give us freedom to sin because there's grace anyway can you see that amen all right now 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 as each one of us can each one of us put our hand up say that's me I'm in the book as each one of us has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God everybody say manifold now we ended up last week learning that manifold means that there's different parts to it you know the manifold in a car is when you got all the various exhausts that come out of each piston they join into one pipe going out the back the exhaust pipe that joining of multiple pipes into one is called the manifold so if you look at it in reverse it's one pipe becoming many so you and I are seated in grace he is grace it's not like God has you know different parts different types of grace it is one grace but that grace will manifest in different ways so when I'm talking to my children and I'm working with my children and I'm disciplining my children I'm leading my children guiding my children there is a grace in me to be a father God gives you that ability by the nature that you have children Now, when I deal with my wife, I deal differently. There's a different manifestation of the grace as a husband. While I'm up here, there's a different manifestation again. So even though I'm a father and a husband, right now I'm manifesting in the grace of the teacher. Can you see that? So now it's the same grace but it shows up for what I need at the right time now if you don't understand that the enemy can press you into an area where you think you can't make it anymore where you think if he gets me in this way then I'm gonna fail but have you know Jesus was tempted in all things he covered every base have you know there is absolutely no lack that Jesus cannot provide for the Bible says he was when he bore stripes wounds for you he healed all your diseases the, do you really think the devil's gonna come up with some modern disease that God didn't think of when he put Jesus on the cross 
No, Jesus bore every single disease. Word of God says there's nothing new under the sun. And so there's not some new modern thing that God didn't think about. It's just a different manipulation of the same evil. So even though you say in the 16th century or the 10th century or the 1st century, you know, people say the Bible is an old-fashioned book. No, this is the constitution of heaven. And heaven is an eternal place. Doesn't matter when it was put onto page, it's an eternal constitution. And so God has already got everything covered that could ever happen to man in that book. Now the enemy wants to use, even though you're born again, yes, hallelujah, you're going to heaven, wonderful, that's magnificent, but what about this area? And he'll try to squeeze you into somewhere, and if you don't understand that you have grace available for that situation, the enemy could take you out in that area. You think God, yes, he looks after them and looks after that one, and yes, but he's a pastor, yes, but he's a this, and yes, but they are that, and yes, but they've been Christians for 10 years. And if he can somehow find an area where you not trusting the grace, that goes for all of us, myself as well, then he can hurt us in that area. And so I want you to, in our next, as we go forward, is to recognize that there's a manifold grace that we are stewards over. Steward means that you know exactly what's needed and you can manage it correctly. As born again children of God, we have been made the righteousness of God. And by faith, we have access to God's grace. Whatever you're doing, whatever your call is, whatever vision is in your heart, grace enables you to fulfill that. In this life-changing series, Alan Bagg will teach you the relationship between righteousness and God's grace. You're going to see God in a whole new light and it's going to really make your walk with Him even more powerful. Learn to triumph over any obstacle in your life. When you see grace the way God intended for you to see it and you walk in it, you're going to see yourself reigning in life. Understanding and operating in the fullness of God's grace has the potential to make us unstoppable. So get the series and walk in the fullness of God's grace. Contact Allen Bank Ministries at any of these details. Our bountiful God of grace. It's an amazing revelation when you come to the knowledge that God is grace. That the very His life force is that. It's like the sun gives heat and light. That's who our God is. I really want to encourage you. I know that in these programs we sometimes limit it for time. But yeah, you can get all the parts and listen to them again and again and again. Of course, they're available on MP3 as well. And by getting that, you can just download it onto your computer, onto your phone, and listen to it again and again. The more you renew your mind to it, the more you will see it and access it. And I can promise you this, it'll transform the way that you walk with your God and experience all that He has for you. Now, this God of grace has given us a promise that if we would pray, He will answer. I'm going to pray that for your life right now. Father, thank you for my dear friend. You've blessed them. You've caused life to manifest in that, in that family. And I come against every foul work of darkness, every evil that tried to hinder that family, every sickness and disease, every lack, every form of poverty. I break its hold in the name of Jesus. And Father, we now access the throne of grace and receive grace to help in this time of need. And I call for provision. I call for healing. I call for deliverance. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we praise you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God, my friend. I believe God has answered that prayer as you see it manifesting because your miracle is happening right now. You're going to see it. And when it does happen, Please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. We're so encouraged by the letters we receive. It really gives us confidence and courage to continue with this work of God. And we can touch so many lives because of it. God bless you. Well, that's all we have time for today. We're going to get together again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Were they called to equip believers to flourish in their ministries? 
Alan and Janine Bank are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. You can join us in the Helderberg at these times at Section 3 Gan Center on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street in Somerset West. If you're in the northern suburbs, you can join us at Durbanville Live at these times on the first floor of the Durbanville Conference Center found at 27 Wellington Road. And if you would like to join us at Paul Live, we're on the first floor of the Berlin Center on the corner of Optonhorst and Berlin Streets. You're also welcome to meet with our family in Claymont in the Claymont Community Hall on Main Road. We also meet in Stellenbosch, so if you're in that area, connect with us at this location. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're not close to any of our locations, feel free to participate in our online services over the weekend at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.